Sanguinani Makai, and welcome to another episode of Daily Title of SAPC One. Last 22 months is cool, man. I want to buy a but also no part of to like South Africa. I come again, we don't talk about me. I want to be who's easy, Lord. I'm having it. I'm having no sense. Kibash, of course, who Andy, so who is our sign language interpreter? And I'm trying to cool man into Enzima. I cool man over this. Cool man over pay you like my commission. And Kanja, I'm going to go in this war. Since the 1940s till to date, God, when I'm trying to get to Boshi, I get to Kuzi, I get to Zulu, to go to Pella. Spent trying to find a solution. But I'm having a tongue about this one, Nicolette. Nakali, we're talking about Nicolette, who are machining when I walk up, push by Krishma Pulaning. And Smedity is already said, Sometimes Naganeta by our Nachella Tay taxpayer, your reborn number by the Rikis, a cat on the commission. So, how about this Caesar? What actually happens now? We know in South Africa, I mean, globally, you are innocent until proven guilty. Mm. But the first thing to the reboot, if your name is being named there. Mm. Does that automatically make you guilty? Or is this actually just a kangaroo court that we are yeah. currently just we're involved in, right, Bona? Now, I want to understand, as a young person in South Africa, as Mosa Melody, mm. how does the commission affect me? Well, I can tell you, Gangnam Ninja, you think about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and Uzo Kumbulu Guti, what na banta bali abula wa bali mala, and they were given the chance to, you know, reconcile. But did they really reconcile? Omo yuma wa kubaba ke washa na gato mutoko na usambe mkalko eninga gubo. So truly, what is the point of the commission? Yine zamugians. And it's funny that you tell that story because I've got a young boy who, I, or a young man that I know, who for the first time at age five found out about the people that killed his mother in cold blood. Mm. But this is called Truth and Reconciliation Commission. She covered herself with a blue plastic bag. Sure. We killed her. And 25 years later, he still has absolutely no justice. Now, that's what we're going to be asking. Now, when are going to be asking, we're going to be asking, we're to be asking, how do they affect you? Do you even understand yeah. what is the point of them? Mm. And when you hear amount of money that is being spent mm. on these commissions, what what are you thinking? But mm. we've got Bukulu and he's got something to say. Let's see what he had to say. One of the very most dubious thing about South Africa's democracy today is actually even the fact that democracy was compromised. You have got five or six commissions, no result. The greatest commission of all times that we need is to prosecute the crime of apartheid. And the people like F.W. Dittleck who actually claimed to be the instigators of democracy have declared that apartheid was never a crime against humanity. But look at what they're doing. They've privatized then in apartheid and then you look at SAA. Some planes can no longer fly to debit. They're saying they're trying to cut down on costs and they're making it look as if we do not have enough funds as a state. But you can spend 500 million on one commission and you have got a chapter nine institution framework that does not even help us in any way. What is the NPA doing after all of these fact findings have been concluded? So you then ask yourself if indeed the chapter nine institution have now become a third force influenced by people with money or people within the political connectedness. The SABC is collapsing. Companies are retrenching people. Telcom have retrenched, MultiChoice have retrenched, Standard Bank have retrenched, and more companies continue to retrench, whereas on the state of address dated last year, which is uh, 2019, the president promised 2 million jobs, and in fact, we have lost more than 500 jobs. But you will be told that there will be a commission of inquiry that is there to address the problems in South Africa. How do we address the problem where is everything else that is supposed to be state-owned is actually privatized, including the mines, the land, the oceans, and everything else? This is, is very problematic. And it is frustrating for normal citizens to actually continue to sit down and listen to a government that is failing to the power. We are being failed on a day-to-day -day basis. And I believe that what we need to do is declare a state of emergency. No more state of nation address, no more public meetings or whatsoever the case is. If it means they are failing us, then we go to re-election because you can't have commission of inquiry. Where is this very same commission of inquiry that is supposed to be an output for prosecutions and the legal framework to help save our country is actually controlled by the same people that are supposed to be brought into justice. 
Hey, I am a Mazambala today. Moga delta tara. I go to Tabaki or Ritsu. See, Taba lo kono moga delta tara. Nyoko chiba rna. What are these commissions? Gere ko aroko na li barking tax investigation ko tax mal administration ko sars. Gere ko abat state capture. Gere ko abat Marikana. Gere ko abat SD many. And all we get is a commission of inquiry. It can't work like that anymore. Leslie M, welcome. Thank you. What are these commissions of inquiry? So one of the biggest misconceptions are that people don't have an understanding of your commissions of inquiry and a court of law. So just as an understanding in the most basic form is that your commissions is a fact-finding commission, basically okay. getting people in, finding what the truth is, investigating, and doing a recommendation towards the president, in this case, President Cyril Ramaphosa. And then your court of law can make a legal binding decision as to hold somebody directly accountable and send that person to prison. So, so, so we're just having fun. We're finding facts. We're putting the facts out there. We have to no know one the is, truth, right? Oh, and when we know the truth, no one gets prosecuted? So there's a gap between yeah. the recommendation and actual prosecution. Yeah. That is not where the commission comes in place. Because yes. once a commission makes a finding, the finding is handed over. Ah. So now you're looking at a different... Um, concept legal now. You're looking, you, you're looking at a completely different legal yeah. body, which is your national prosecutors, who, who now has to take action and hold that person or those people who are in the wrong accountable. Yo, Melody, in because I just want to understand, Hori, if we're going to be spending one billion rand yeah. just to find the facts, just to uncover the truth, mm. and then there's another body that still needs to prosecute, mm. and another body prosecution. What are we saying to our people? We've been doing this since 1940. Yeah. So many commissions have been sitting, but still no one has been arrested. In that whole process, what are we inheriting through our commissions? And, and the question that we keep asking ourselves as a Shuguti, where do we as the youth fit in? Because mm. I'm still yet to see a young person sit on that board of conversation. I'm still yet to see a young person have a part of the solution. Because I mean, I feel like we're going around in circles, not just financially, but also emotionally, psychology as a society. But and of course, just probably get an understanding, Nguti. Do you know what is a commission? Yes, um, my name is Cedric. Firstly, um, I don't know what is a commission. Like you said, a commission is a uh, council that you will be brought to to identify what happened in the instance, in okay. the situation. So what, from what you understand, where do you fit in as a young person? Does it affect you? Does it not affect you? It doesn't affect me because what I believe is it, it's no use. What the money, amount of money that's been wasted in these commissions. Mm. And like you said, it's from 1940. Mm. You come in with old tricks and old methods mm. to a new society that's trying to build itself in a different direction. Mm. So if we can at least move away from the commission board, yeah. because truly, like you saying, mm. no one is really getting held accountable. We're supposed to get held accountable. The guy comes to the stand, he tells us what happened. Sure. But no one gets arrested. He still gets to live out the same door that I walked into. Sure. I hear you. And of course, Ukumbu, you in our social media. You can be part of Ukumbu no, Malia too. It's simple. You all have to do is utilize the hashtag Daily Tata, but also you can remember to go to our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I think it's one of the guys who Facebook with me. Oh, Daniel, oh, Tigay. These commissions are a waste of money. People always testify against each other, but no one gets arrested. What's the use? Maybe Arikwa Salomon, what's the use? Me na ngogo ibona kwa mila ma commissioni je anghamsana ngogo ba eskatinde sneng ayashala mesese shedu manga bespera i i imphumela yakho na kho bantu ababanjwayo noma mhlambe bafune ba account yokuloko ke kwenzakala mangathatha nje umzekeliso nje ngibheke i commission leka ababuzondo naleka dikhang mseneke yahlala i life estimate uwahlala nawe yaze yaphela lo commission wayenza ma recommendation akayekho umuntu namanje osabanjiwe ngancala lo nto mas ngabheka imali esetshenziswa lapho lo mali ngabe sisiza kakhulu Lusha go to Lusha to him sevens. No Lusha Tele Kanjang and Majunga sevens, Monga Pella Mapillons, Manga Sitchens, or to Lusha to him sevens, Bonanga to Dogo Nabaku. And I think the melody that's the way the problem is. Only at this connect, we are talking about high unemployment rates in the country. We're talking about serious issues in the country. We're talking about children sometimes not even getting textbooks, Scottish go long. Yet we're we sitting here with a fact finding exercise that's going to cost the country 1 billion rand and we don't even know if those recommendations are actually going to be affected because the people that the recommendations have been given to are the same people that might need to be prosecuted. It's like going to a warm-up court to go to court. 
but you just don't make it to court. It's like, I know, game is cancelled. It feels like a game <laughs> as a mutual motion. Don't look at the say, wait, break, but we are scooping in the way to like a We welcome you back, like good editor, good SAPC one. That Kubeko and Kulme to Lam Shanjik saying about Tabasha. Part of course, I'm a commission. School more good to get in is that to sell. Why have they been there? And in our society, I tell you, And of course, we're not alone in this. Uh, we've got the former spokesperson of the South African government, of course, Putemba Masego, who's also going to be joining us and just being able to just speak through it. But also, alongside associate lawyer, we have uh, Hendrik Gyuhu, who's also going to chat more about his involvement and his role in the systems. Baba, firstly, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank and you. of course, uh, Putemba. I think I would like to start with you um, from the understanding of a commission. Basically, we explain uh, very simply. Yeah. In a country, right? There are two things of Melizenze. We investigate in Tolama facts mm. before the issue of the court. Okay. So investigation can either happen because I'm a police, I'm a police, you are an investigator, you, they go and look for information. Or the other option is to actually set up a commission. Mm. Yes. And both things are actually aimed at trying to get to the truth. Mm. Because most of court, the court, if you know, it only concrete evidence. Yes. They're not just looking for facts and mm. circumstances. They just want to know what to go and And then a prosecution can actually happen. So, um, seven a commission, not just I'm a prosecutors and my judges, but yeah. I understand the good way in King. Yeah. I'm saying well, we I deeper into all my details. We go to good talaga, we go to Kwenzega before Leo met her. It's at the prosecutor. So it's that's why I think she was saying it's a fact-finding mission. Yeah. Mm. That's essentially it because even the police, my also go court and leave next day. I phone the mind, but phone to investigate, but phone to tell information. Kwenzega. We go to Kwenzega Lane. Before I title the information by the court. So, so, in simple terms, the EM sends the commission. So, thing goes about, so once the information says it's only there, says it's only there, it's only there, no matter how long it takes, it's previously, and I want to understand from back in the day, yeah. what was then the next step? The next step is simple, cool. Either I'm a police or I'm investigator, I tell information, but I title the information. I you need as a prosecutor. Mm. Okay. A prosecutor, then you have to pay your uncle information. Yeah, Your uncle affects it. Your uncle affects it. And then the prosecutor decides to take the case. Mm. Mm. The commission is a long time. The commission is a long time. The commission is a long time. The invite members of the public to mm. come and say, Sazu Guti and Daunetis, what you want to do? What you want to do? What you want to do? What you the commission lay title information, mm. he is a good prosecutor. Mm. He prosecuted peg it, no, no, lay information are equal enough. Meaning, the fun with a posa investigator foot until we have enough evidence so that he issue then in a court. Because if we go to the king, let's say, Utala et dube so it, right? Sure. Go to Chulaban to love. Utata lay information, you go to do to Chulaban, lay information my a court. He caught in a judge, no magistrate was a fungo as good. Exactly what, what happened. Uban mm. began involved. Nasip is cutty. Why and Zan exactly before Lomontan I so jail. So, um, seven's your commission, Larry. Let's yeah. perhaps bring Hendrik in and just get an understanding, Hendrik. Let's start here. Let's take it from the top. And I think uh, Abuti Temba is already kind of contextualized for us what a commission is and what its purpose is, right? Who then calls for that commission? So, um, just to add, uh, I, I think the one important thing, and I think Temba's hit the nail on the head as well as the member in the audience, yeah. um, is uh, the Constitution is a power yes. post-apartheid in, in our Constitution of 1996, which is vested in the executive. And I mean, our executive is the president who's the head of state. Mm. And he's got the ability to establish a commission of inquiry. Okay. Mm. Two or three of the recent ones, for example, has been the Zondo so, Commission yeah. or the State Capture, the Commission of State Capture into alleged state capture. Yes. Yeah. Or, for example, the um, SARS yes. commission that has actually concluded. Yes. I, I, I just wanted to add, and before addressing your question, I want to add uh, there's an extreme importance in terms of the commission's role. Okay. And if I can, for example, just give an example, uh, is that Mr. X being yes. prosecuted by the National Prosecuting Authority yes. is defending his case. Yes. 
and he's only going to do enough with his lawyers to defend his case. His case yes. No other facts will be brought bed. Okay. For example, if we know Mr. X has been involved in mm. state capture, mm. he's only going to do enough to defend his case. Yes. So two or three years into uh, the Zondo Commission, I think it's been very effective. It's the tip of the iceberg that's reached with the National Prosecuting no, no. Authority. If I'm, I'm listening. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I mean, uh, just to add, the fact finding, let okay. me correct. Okay. The yes. fact finding has been very effective. Meaning okay. that if someone had to be prosecuted, they will just do enough. And if I can stress this point, the fact finding thus far, what has been revealed. So and then are we, <laughs> sorry, are we then saying that, and, and this is what I'm hearing from you, because you must also come back and answer my question, yeah. Henrik. Yes. Are, are we then saying, Corey, we don't trust the other side? Because if, 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 if I'm going to present what is defending my case, it means that we don't trust the other side. It means then we do need to have the commissions of inquiry to be able to do that, what we spoke about, yeah. that previous game first, mm. before we go into the main game. So to answer that question, a court of law is an in, in South Africa yes. is, a, is an adversarial system. Adversarial system meaning there are two parties, the state yes. against the accused. Yeah. Yes. Whereas with an inquisitorial system, and that's exactly what, what the, the commission, commission allows someone to do, is for, for example, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, ending, heading up the Zondo Commission, uh, he inquires into every fact which reveals people get subpoenaed. So mm, the yes. inquisitorial system, it's not about not being trusted the other side. Yeah. I think it's extremely it's important mm. yeah. in terms of state capture for the last 10 years to get to the bottom of all of it. Is it justified at a billion rand? Well, I think state capture you actually ran. <laughs> uh, state yeah. capture actually, uh, I mean, if you look at the effect of it, yeah. I've read some articles running Trillion into rand. the billions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in, in, if, whether it's in the public interest, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, financially, it could possibly be questioned, but if you look at the effect of state capture and the effect that it's had yeah. yes. on our country and on our citizens and on the taxpayers of this country, um, I, I, I think there's still room to justify it, yeah. that, yes, yeah. it's expensive. I think I just want to add one or two points, and I agree with sure. Yuko's mm. point. Essentially, in a normal democracy, right, yeah. you don't have commissions. Yes. You'll just have prosecutors or police investigating and prosecutors taking the matter to court. But what has happened in this country over the past 10 to 15 years yeah. is that the law enforcement agencies, especially your commercial crime investigations yeah. unit, yeah your prosecuting authority were mm. weakened. Mm. That is, strong people who used to work in those agencies mm. were fired, mm. and weaker individuals were put in those institutions. So Are the weakened state- weakened or politicized, Budita? Well, let me say weakened, because you know, <laughs> what do we mean by politicized? Yes. Mm. But they did not have the capacity to investigate these cases and yes, take them to yeah. court yes. much quicker. Because in a normal democracy, you wouldn't need a commission first before you charge. You just yes. charge straight. Yes. But you need very good, highly qualified, highly dedicated policemen. Yeah. You need highly qualified, highly skilled prosecutors who can yeah. take a matter to court. Because the last thing we need as a country is to take all of these corruption cases to court and the court the says there's no evidence out. and yes. those people walk free. Yeah. Mm. So mm. that's why we need these commissions now. But yeah. I don't think it will be a permanent feature of our system for, for so, going into the future. So, gentlemen, I'm, I'm thinking of Lumfano Kele Lukshin, this young man sitting in the township, mm. and, and trying to understand Uguti. As much as we go to Amagomishi in this Talipant and we have this fact finding, mm. and then to date, I'm still yet to see the fact sheet and show Uguti who was prosecuted, who mm. actually went to prison and sat about mm. Uguti. Because the, the point of it is to find a fact so we can take you to court. But now we found the facts, but no one's going to court. And imagine, I mean, I'm wondering as a young person in South Africa, is it really meaningful? But of course, we've got a caller also who's going to jump into our conversation. Uh, Kolani, welcome to Daily Tetra Log, SAPC1. Kolani? Hello, Mijani. Siapi, Lapu Dijani. 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 Yes, 
South Africa, really echoes the sentiments of yeah. most South Africans because yeah. as ordinary people when we look at this we're yeah. like you're spending one billion rand people in bush park electricity we've got load shading because we at the end of the day we feel like no one is getting prosecuted so what then is the point and I think the gentlemen yeah. have started touching into it but let's go to an ad break when we come back we want answers gentlemen <laughs> We welcome you back, of course, like with the to say PC. One last quick one, and we're going to print the footage trail with the Wayne Lele Kaya. See, I get right to go to Joe Fago train, which is 011339, and of course, 1315. We're going to come in as a job of Poland, or Paul, and now we're going to go to the understand that we're joined by also PhD candidates uh, from the University of Pretoria, who's in the Pans, of course, who are also very interested in this topic. Again, I am Kaza, but I want to take it back, gentlemen, to Inkulmoye, to where we're Speaking about the accountability, it's in the fact sheet, we've seen how many people that have been said to have done. I mean, a crazy, we literally was singing, yiri, 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 like I did this, canary. you know? Mm. But big figures, Kati, so would people must be prosecuted. As long as born, is it corruption? What, what's stopping us? Okay, I think that. Tell me, show me, good thing, you have women not all on a good the Mali spend or Guma Commission yeah. in Nengakul, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's money that would be, we could be using for other things. That, that's important. Mm -hmm. But Mali also see understand that we're talking against the background of more than, I think the estimate is 500 billion yeah. rands that yeah. has been stolen. Right? Yeah. Sure. From the taxmen, from, from us, all of us sitting around here. So, yes, a billion rands is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to chase, 500 billion runs, you may actually hey. justify that. But mm. the point he's making is that um, <clears throat> if prosecution needs to, we need to see results as quickly yes. as possible. And I think that yes. I share that frustration. Yeah. I think that we need to see more and more people, mm. more politicians mm. Mm. in orange overalls for yeah. who are involved in corruption. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Mm. The president has appointed a new head of the NPA, the new prosecutor. She has told the public that she's putting together a very strong team when she got to the NPA, she found that she did not have the skills mm. inside there. And it, it links to my point earlier on, mm. that those people who were stealing money from the state, yeah. they actually also weakened the state's ability to actually prosecute. 100%. So the NPA was extremely weakened. There were no people. The hawks themselves were extremely weakened. So you did not have very good people who could invest, investigate a matter from beginning to end so that you see prosecutions. Mm. Yes, it needs to happen much mm. quicker. Mm. We all want to see results. But I think that we need to make sure that when these matters go to court, mm. they lead to prosecution. Yes, because yes. the risk is that we can rush and say there's a church sheet, it goes to court. And I can assure you, our judiciary, our judges, our magistrates will throw away a case, even if mm. you believe that a greasy stole money. Mm. If the case is not mm. presented mm. properly, professionally, solidly, those very people are going to walk. So we've got to be careful. Before we bring in Cessna Lady, I just want to quickly ask, as somebody comes from the legal fraternity, yes. is the legal and the criminal justice in this country also captured? Because for me, yes, that the Temba said is going to happen. Mm. But there's been so many. We are sitting with a report from Marikana. Mm. 
We're not seeing heads roll. Life is demand. Life is demand. People got compensated, but a criminal acts have taken place. La heads are not rolling. What I can comment on um, is, is, is the fact that I believe South Africa's got a very strong judiciary. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think it's probably we can be proud globally of it. Similarly, what I can, what I can say is it's up to the National Prosecution Authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, um, to do what needs to be done to bring an accused before court of law and find them guilty or not. Um, so essentially, and as Tim Buzz highlighted, um, I think everything lies with the prosecution authority after these commissions. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the point about uh, the judiciary or possibly the system, criminal system being captured, I don't, I don't think that's a fair comment. I think the, the system is much bigger than individuals. Yeah. Yes. And our democratic system, criminal justice system, in total, the judiciary is something we can be very proud of. And no, it's not captured. There but, might be, there might be, there yes. might be individuals yes. within the commissions, of, with, within, within the bodies that might have been captured. But that yes. latches yeah. on to my point. When the yeah. fact finding is done, yeah. yes. and a court of law will find someone guilty yeah. on, based on the facts and yes. a closed chain of evidence. That is what we need. Hendrik, I just want to ask you quickly, quickly. Mm. I really want to get Cisna Lady mm. when get a social, a social uh, perspective. And I know you might not be in a position to answer this question, but I'm yes. going to ask you that way. Who then holds the National Prosecuting Authority accountable? When they don't act. Can I, as a, as, as a civil servant, mm. say, mm. you know what? I, I, listen, Marikana has happened. We need, we need, somebody needs, something needs to happen now. Mm. So, so, so there is this option of, um, uh, I'm not necessarily going to say anyone holds the NPA accountable. Yeah. But what I can say is, I mean, the NPA is led by a minister. Okay. And apart from that, I can also say that there's this mechanism of private prosecution, oh. although although um, very um, limited because of its expensiveness. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, it's extremely expensive. Yeah, of course. Um, you would have recently seen that uh, Afri Forum mm -hmm. um, yes. is privately prosecuting, um, but but that's a mechanism to possibly you know start following as wider organizations or institutions mm -hmm. to try and prosecute people who are not being prosecuted yeah. from the National Prosecuting Authority. So sure. what I'm picking up is what from Mendo Isho is simply witty. You need to be rich enough and have the guts to be able to persuade because clearly you won't just come in. What do you see in this whole conversation? No, definitely it's very political what you're saying because it boils down to resources. So the people who end up being actually brought before commissions mm. are people that can afford to have legal counsel to take them through the courts. Mm. Um, not the courts because it's not a court, but the mm. commissions themselves. Yeah. And yeah. I think I'm also getting a bit confused because it smells like a court. Looks, looks like, like a court. court. If it's like, it's, it's not, not a court. court. That and, 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 if it and, quacks like a duck, it walks like a duck, duck. It must be a it must duck. Be a duck. <laughs> but this is a situation yes. where there's a discrepancy or there's a cognitive dissonance where, mm. for an example, we keep saying life is a was a commission. It actually wasn't. It was an inquest. Yes. And these are the things that actually keep us confused because we're like, yes, it looked like it. There was a presiding judge. Yes. There, were, there was counsel to represent the Good people point, there. Yeah. But it, this is part of what, as a young person, concerns me. We see things happen before us. We hear the ANC and our political party saying, we brought the commission of um, inquiry ahead, but that's impossible. Yes. The president did that. But we keep hearing in the news and the media that they're the ones that bring this about. And that gives us that confusion about what the ruling party does and what actually is done by our president. Mm. Here's a personal question. Do you feel, as, as Umutu Ifunde lie, I mean, when yeah. Umfundi, you, there's yeah. a reason why you're studying what you're studying. Do you feel you can change this, like in this well, space? I really believe in our constitution. That's really yeah. one thing. So yeah. when he was yeah. talking about our rule of law, our constitutional democracy, mm. I feel like this is proper. And I know that commissions are brought about by 184, um, section 184 of the mm. constitution. Yeah. So the fact that they're alive yeah. makes me believe that there's some form of justice that we get. Unfortunately, we sometimes hope or feel as if the commissions themselves are the ones that need Supposed to take to people prosecute. to prison. Mm. But unfortunately, there's another avenue for that. That's mm. the National mm. Prosecuting Authority's mm. duty. They're the ones that work on the president's recommendations recommendations which are from recommendations from the commissions themselves but the people that we need to be actually putting our efforts into is the NPA because it's up to them and I heard Batemba saying they might be captured as well or they might not be strong enough to actually go They've forward with these mm. so these are the things that we worry about because I personally do believe in the constitution yeah. but I also believe that things are happening to get us where we need to be in terms of yeah is there a way to go forward is there some yeah. uh, like, can we get it better? Yes. <laughs> but Tamba, as somebody that has been, you've, you've, you've given testimony at mm. one of these uh, commissions. The Zonda Commission. At the Zonda Commission. Yes. Just take me a little bit back to the Act of 1947 of the Commission's Act. It gives power to the president. Like, it, it's got an executive power. Mm. Is there room for South Africa to be able to change that? 
Well, um, let me talk to the the first point you raised yes. earlier on about yes. who holds the NPA yeah, accountable. accountable. Mm. That's Parliament. Okay. So your MPs, if you know an MP, they must actually call the director of public prosecutions okay. to go and account yes. to Parliament because when they are accounting to Parliament, they are accounting to all of us here. Yes. Mm. They must be uh, able to answer questions. Why are there no prosecutions? Yes. And they, that's where delay. accountability mm. is. Secondly, the president has set up a special, I think it's called anti-corruption court. Or something. Mm. So those people who have been found guilty of corruption in departments, there's a special court okay. to make sure that these cases of corruption Move are faster. dealt with much quicker. Mm. So, so, so it's happening. Mm. Right? Mm. Okay. But how do we then sit with a conversation like that when we saw one person who was corrupt, who was seen as a minister, who was said to be corrupt, involved in corruption, to be appointed as a new minister or in a new department, again in power, and we expect to understand what things are being dealt with. I mean, we've seen people move chairs with the same thing. But <laughs> as in, what is morning and then says, says about the Martini, because me and I, ah, he's quite right. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going Sir Ramaphosa came as the delegation leader and it was a little bit like having Nelson Mandela back here again. Everybody wanted to, to touch his cloak, yeah, but, but it's not like that Two anymore. years ago. Well, since then, we've discovered just how awful the state-owned capture was yeah. of enterprises. Now, this is one of those few subjects where Pravin Gordon says, if you think it was bad, I'm telling you it was worse. Now, you tell me how anybody who for the last five years, ten years, has come here and said, South Africa's going really well, we've got everything under control, we've got this, that and the other, suddenly turned around and said, well, actually, the entire economy was hijacked, by the way, and we're terribly sorry to tell you that the losses are in the billions. Well, actually, we really don't know the, 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 the trillions. And, oh, and by the way, even if it was bad, it was worse. And we're not even sure we've dealt with it. And so, in order to be taken seriously here again, we really need a big, fat broom and, and some chains and some prison time. Well, how many people have gone to prison so far? Yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that point. On to other things. I mean, you're a big fan of airlines. You yeah. like to travel the world. You do shows from airlines. Mm -hmm. SAA, I don't know if you've ever flown SAA, if you've I've ever had it. the joy. Of course, I'm um, an excellent airline. What's, what's your, what's your, what's your, what's your okay. view on the, on the turnaround there? Well, first of all, the idea of causing a business emergency, which basically means they're out of money. Yep. Secondly, the amount of money that the South African government has to put into the airline is a simply staggering amount. And thirdly, unless there is a proper restructuring, proper means government hands off, yeah. proper, uh, properly means let an airline person run the airline. But otherwise, you've got to ask the question, why not just shut it down? Is it worth having a go with a proper board, proper CEO in place? Is it worth having a go? Of course it's worth having a go, but I'm telling you that'll never happen. I'm telling you the government can't keep its hands off it. I'm telling you politicians cannot stop interfering in airlines. They've done it for decades in South Africa. They will continue to do it for decades more. <laughs> Until they hive it off, put it in the private sector, sell it to another airline, or shut it down and let somebody else come in who can run an airline. You're just going to have to accept the government will have to pay money. That's fine if that's what the policy is going to be. If that's what your policy is, that's OK. But please, don't try and pretend you're restructuring when actually all you're doing is moving the check chairs on the Titanic. How does that then go to the credibility of the South African government at a place like this where it can't make those hard decisions? What credibility? I mean, the president... He came in knowing that South Africa's government has minuscule credibility following the Zuma years and the state capture, the, the, the capture of state-owned enterprises. You can't suddenly whitewash it away like you're cleaning a wall. People here... Look, don't get me wrong, though. The opportunities in South Africa are huge. The, the potential is enormous. The labour force is fantastic. But, uh, but you cannot just turn around to people and say, oh, by the way, don't worry about that nasty little business where trillions were siphoned off in a very corrupt environment, of which, by the way, I was a member of the government at the time. I was a member. I see nothing, saw nothing, heard nothing. Richard Quest in Davos, thank you very much.
Kion Tate Richard West. Well, I admit that he was part of the government. And Matelo yeah. were part of the government. And we, from the outside, look at it as seeing as, you guys were there. You saw all of this happen. What did you do? Mm. Right? Let's come back after the break. Yo, la wa morela and ipu sa tswa gore joina Henrik le puti temba ba re di pope sal dance in these commissions of inquiry but ra kuti isa rune as baswa re reningi because ra yona cheleta ya fela ya ba tsa South Africa so we need to get a better understanding gore na di di dance ning these pope because we need to be joining them on the dance floor yeah. but for me, Melody, I think the last comment we make here about mm. the reality is that if, if, if we're saying the pope sal dance but the same people that are dance are supposed to be dancing are the same people that are working in our uh, legislature, uh, in our backing executive right now, yeah. they're working in high positions of power. How then do you prosecute that same person? 100%. Right? But I think before we get back here, we've got Dr. Makosi Kozos joining us on the couch. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. It's <laughs> lovely having you again. <laughs> Let's quickly go to Richard. Richard, we had a conversation and you said this will, the, the, the commissions of inquiry might be able to give me an indication of who I want to vote for and who I want to be led by. Are you still feeling confident? Yes, the truth. Yeah. What has happened behind us yeah. as South Africans and how we choose to support our leadership yeah. um, and as people of our country to bring unity back together to look at the way forward. Yes. Now, now our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, was implicated in the Marikana uh, 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 scandal, right? Mm. Are you still feeling confident? Do you feel that he's the, I mean, at the end of the day, we need the National Prosecuting uh, Authority to prosecute. Mm. If they're going to be prosecuting our president, are you still feeling confident? Mm. Yes, he's given, us, he, he's given us as South Africans his word yes. that he will follow this through. <laughs> and in the last two years, he's made the right steps yes. to bring that to light. And the Zondo Commission is a prime example of that, mm. um, where it is a no holds barred. Yeah. You with me? Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, and as you in the Kulmo research, I mean, when all President Sarah uh, Maposa Angiana, four commissions were set up. Yeah. And we want the same steam, but yeah. no man, I mean, someone, you have a strong voice. I mean, you used to sit in Parliament as representation for the NC, but what can we as a Sako? And that politically now allows us to maybe get your understanding of this whole thing. Let's see, Bugaya Imzant. As for me, Konakele. Mm. Konakele, Konakele yeah. mm. And you know, you can set, as, set up as many commissions as you want mm. without decisive, courageous leadership. Mm. Those commissions will be in vain. Mm. Mm. And I am speaking from experience here. I used to sit in the commission that was investigating the rot at SAPC. Mm. But because I was vocal, you have a situation in South Africa where those that wanted to correct mm. what is wrong mm. are the ones that get punished. Mm. And those that are the ones that are looting the state mm. Mm. Sure. at all levels, in other words, the whole, all the spheres of government. Yeah. So I am saying, Without strong, resolute, courageous leadership, mm. Mm. we are not going to win this war against corruption. For as long as we recycle, rot, yep. mm. take a minister, is implicated mm. in this, the minister tomorrow is put Pops in another position. Else. And those that are trying to do the right thing, even Abotem. people like mm. Abotem. Mm. I, I'm not talking about people that are very far. Mm. Those are the people that have high moral stamina. Mm. They end up being the ones that are punished. What is our duty as South African citizens? Mm. We need to reclaim our power back. Mm. In fact, we need... <laughs> we need to even reclaim the administration mm. timber. Mm. Because the problem is that you can have politicians there, mm. but if they have the administration that is itself implicated and that is itself so severely compromised morally, you have a problem. Mm. You need the people like Abba Temba who are able to stand up, 
okay. to consider mm. going back to the state mm. and actually assist the process. Mm. Because mm. Sir Ramaphosa, the president, on his own, without a strong administration, is nothing. It's not going to mm. be able to deal with these cases mm. on his own. Mm. Mm. Ma, what is it cool on that? Mm. Maybe we can get the temper also yeah. to comment on what mm. Doctor is saying. In terms of you extend it in mm. thought, meaning it okay, Sinolush, we have young people in this in this in this moment, in this generation, we have a very young South Africa. In Kinga Engna, how do we then take out the moral decay of our fathers and mothers? Because that's who we're dealing with. If, if we put it into a real situation, it's our mom and dad mm. who are corrupt. It's mm. our mom and dad who are decaying in mm. morals and you're expecting us to be the difference. Kanja, this is my... Mm. You know, that, that is why I'm saying everything boils down to leadership. In mm. to today, South yeah. Africa, Zibona ma moral voices, a suffocate, a strangulator, a kingwa, a bulawa, and mm. wayong kinto. Mm. And the babona laba abenza ungundo la be kushul wabenzi wa zonki zinto, be kavwa, basuswe la ba yo bekwa la ba kupuge, batole la ba banya banta ba kulumanges in daba ifunayo, les in daba ifunayo bona jungum paratingo be kunen, song as if funny quality of life. Mm. That's true. Song as if funu pila in a peaceful, crime free mm. environment. Environment. Sonke, we wanted to live in an environment where it is easy to get jobs. jobs. Mm. It, currently, right now, you can see, even with those interviews, the reality is that even the international, those potential investors that could be coming to South Africa are very cautious mm. to come and invest mm. in South mm. Africa. Mm. It, and that is because they see this soft it, you know, we, we have this winky, 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 mm. we, we, we don't treat that. And, 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 and I, think, I think what I would love to do, I would probably uh, maybe implore upon the president to act decisively mm. and remember that he is not, as the head of state, yeah. he does not only represent the one million odd mm. ANC members. Mm. He is representing all the South Africans and he has to take the interests of South Africa first. Yes. Mm. If it means he has to sacrifice some of his comrades, so be it sure. for the for yeah. the sake of the country. comment. <laughs> Who invited her? <laughs> <laughs> well, she said everything. I, I, yeah. There's nothing to add. I, yeah. I, I think that um, as a society, as a nation, we've got to have faith in our young people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> secondly, we've got to raise the, the standard of leadership, ethical leadership, mm. people who are committed to making sure that we fight corruption. Because mm. ultimately, with this corruption, you and I are losing. Exactly. Uh, we, we may think that it's just about a few politicians, but yeah. our economy is collapsing largely because of the money that has been st stolen mm. from, from our coffers. We've got to find a way, because we can say why is the president not acting against this minister or that minister. That. Yes, that's mm. an important issue to be raised. But um, you've got to be worried when somebody, a politician, is accused of corruption, is being charged with corruption. You see a lot of young people going to court to support that very same person. Mm. So I think that yeah. it becomes important yeah. for us, especially you as young people, not just to point fingers, but to say what is it that you do as individuals, yeah. as young people to fight this corruption. Because I can assure you that if we don't deal with corruption decisively, all of us, not just mm. government, obviously government has a bigger role, but young people also need to stand up and say, these are standards that we, we cannot but accept. But what can we do, Botemba? I what think we've, we've got the one uh, approach from Hendrik. Mm -hmm. What can we do? And I think maybe mm -hmm. we're going to go to a quick ad break, yeah. Papa Chogne. But when we come back, I think that's what we want as Basel. So we do want the solutions. We do want to act. You've seen as we've been on the streets, you know, we've, we've, we've acted. But we need the assistance to understand. But let's go to a quick ad break. As a young person in South Africa, I'm learning so much today from this episode. understand that okay, we also as Baswa have a role to play. One billion rand has already been spent. Knowing five billion, ten billion, you start to understand why then the commissions of inquiry are very, very important mm. and what role they actually play. But now we want to understand what now. 
And I think, Hendrik, that's the most important question for us. What now? How do we move forward? Plainly stated, um, in my professional opinion, um, from a legal perspective, we wait for the Zondo Commission, for example, to conclude. Um, the reason being that is a report will then be produced yes. with certain findings and there's a mandate by President Cyril Ramaphosa to mm -hmm. um, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo. Um, I mean, I, I know us as young South Africans, we don't like the word wait because the damage that's being done currently mm. um, or, or, or the concerns that we have, but we wait and we believe in our judicial system. And just to give you an example, uh, um, for example, the, the, the commission into SARS, the recommendation there by um, uh, retired Justice mm. Nugent was uh, for Tom Oyone to be fired. Yes. And that's actually materialized. And mm. President Ramaphosa, from that report that he received back, uh, executed that recommendation. So from my perspective and from... But it a, wasn't the only one, Hendrik. Um, it wasn't the only recommendation. And also I want sure, to ask sure, you, just, sure, sure. just well, before you carry on there, but okay, because I want to understand Khurna, King about the Zondo Commission, because many commissions have been concluded. Yeah. And, and we haven't seen anything. Yeah. And, and for me, the biggest one is Marikana. I want to understand people lost their lives in that thing, you know? So why specifically the Zondo one? I, I appreciate that. I think the main focus and why specifically the Zondo one and why I say we wait for that one mm. is, is, is because I think the evidence being presented there is extremely valuable. It's admissible evidence, firstly. Um, you know, the evidence that are gathered there will give the National Prosecution Authority and Temba m mentioned earlier the new appointment for the Director of Public Prosecutions. Yeah. I, I think the Zondo Commission at the moment is the main focus and um, we wait because I believe that the evidence presented there will be extremely valuable sure, in the long run. Sure. Yeah, and I think maybe let's quickly speak to Horatia on the other side. What, what type of prosecution do you think South Africans are looking for? Because compensation doesn't help, Horisori doesn't help. What type of prosecution do you think we're actually looking for? Hi, um, I think that it's important to define as a citizen what is persecution? What does that look like? Is it you letting go, especially in the case of state capture, is it you letting go of your assets? Mm. Do I just want to see you in jail or will you have enough um, power as a leader and money to get a lawyer who's going to be able to take you mm. out? And when she was speaking about leadership, okay, how, what's the change management in the organization? Mm. Okay, I've taken the leader and I've prosecuted him and I've fired him, mm. but what about his deputy? Yes. What about mm. the three people who are coming behind them. Yeah. What's that change and management process? the people that were process? working during yeah. state capture. Yeah. So I think that's the main thing when it comes to even the youth, when you're asking us, what's our, what's our take? What are we doing? When um. I decide to pay you 50 rand as a cop because you stopped me, then yeah. guess what? I'm I'm participating hey, in corruption. Hey, calling us for our moral decay. So, so, hey. so, so, <laughs> that's what I, I want to yeah. come back to, and I think yeah. that's a point we've heavily set on Namkanj. And uh, Dr. Koza, you've been someone that has been vocal about this, and here we're saying we have like the last minute in the show, but my, my question is, Los Lidokshin, how do we how do we mobilize the children at home? How do we bring them closer to this co conversation and, and be able to move forward? Because as Funukul Makpel. You know, uh, first of all, Angin Halali Sele is a daily threat because this very dialogue that we are having today mm. is very important mm. because it, it is beginning to get the youth involved in all these issues yeah. in the governance of the country. Yeah. Because it's not just the issue of the leadership and mm. the issue of mm. you and mm. I. It's our issue as, 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 as the young people. Mm. And Africa has the youngest population, by yes. the way, in mm. the world. And the young people have to take, have to reclaim that space mm. in a constructive way. But in this road, unfortunately, the young people, the energy of young people is directed in the wrong ways mm. where they start vandalizing. Mm. Mm. They voice their anger by destroying libraries and mm. doing all those kinds of things, which is counter because mm. they are frustrated. Mm. Mm. But if you have a very strong leader mm. who is going to be there and demonstrate practically that there is no fear or favor. Mm. In mm. other words, no law. matter mm. The, mm. the fact that you may have. The fact, the fact that you may have helped me mm. to become the president mm. must not be brought into the equation. 
Because when you are taking a decision. Not here together. Yeah. Yes. 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 You yes. can't be together. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. And I think that if you tell a guy and you just listen to this conversation, don't go busy when I'm talking about the poor man out here in the corner. So, I'm going to go to the poor man out here in the corner. To solutions because there's truly the song. So, the one I don't get to Jay Pella Pam Gomez is going to understand the Witty Winter Galan. Sponga Kulu, which when we told you to over and change to Uber Night, because it's open night, partner corner with social media of Fagin Kulu. The conversation does not stop here. And thank you very much to our guest, Barnyaka Azamu. So, tomorrow we're talking about yeah. the connection between Africans and African Americans. Do join us half past 10 only on SABC One. <laughs>